Welcome, my name is Cohen Heldens and I'm a multi-platinum mixing engineer. In this tutorial I'm going to teach you guys how to mix a full song with overloud plugins only. I will start with the drums, moving on to the bass, keyboards, anything else that involves any instrumentation, vocals to end up on the mix bus. Let's dig in and get started. Okay, let me solo the drums first and have a listen to the hook part of the song and see what we are working with. As you can see, it's not overly a lot going on. It's uh, two layered kick drums and a couple of snares and claps with some hi-hats. So I like to insert the EQ84 from Overloud on every single insert to emulate a British console. Let's start with the kick drum. So what I usually love to do is add a little bit of 60 hertz on the kick just to round it off a bit more on the bottom end, which we can see we can do right here. So we press it on to engage it and then give it a tiny bit of a boost to give that bottom a bit more, more growl to put it that way. As you can see there's a kick layered with this kick which we will do the exact same thing with. So engage the bottom band of the EQ84 which is already set at 60 and add a tiny bit of low end. There we go. And let's play back and see how that is sounding. As you can hear, the low end has a bit more beefier now, using a little bit of 60 hertz. So let's have a listen to the snaps. So what I like to do with the snaps is actually add a little bit of mid-range to them to give it a little bit more body. So let's switch on the mid band right here and probably set it to about 800 hertz let's boost it a bit more to figure out if we have the right frequency here so let's play that back and see how it sounds sounds about right let's back off a little tiny bit and maybe add a little bit of 1 to 2 kilohertz so that the claps are more in your face because the ear is most sensible between 1 and 4 kilohertz. So engage the next band over and dial this to probably a little bit in between 700 and 1.6 kilohertz and boost this a bit and see how that sounds. So I had to move the band a bit up, as you could hear it became more apparent, the sound of the clap became more apparent. So now we have that dialed in, let's dial it back a little bit to make it more natural and play back and see how that sounds. And this is how it sounds without the EQ. And again with the EQ. As you can hear the clap became a lot more present in the mix. We can pretty much do the same thing with the clap underneath that because it's more of a, a layered clap. So what we're going to do again is engage the middle band, switch it to around 700-800 hertz, boost it a bit, play it back and see how that sounds. Sounds about right, so let's back over a little bit again and play it. It's about right, and let's do the same thing we did on the previous clap and engage the band over and move that closer to, say, 1.5 kilohertz. Boost it and see how it sounds. about right let's move it back again and play it back sounds about right let's bypass the plugin and see how it sounded before 
and how it sounds after. As you can hear the entire two claps are more prominent in the mix, more clear, more defined as we wanted to have. Let's see how the claps and the kick drums interact together. As you can hear the kick drums are a little bit too prominent, so I'm just gonna raise the levels of the claps a tiny bit. Should be about right. Yeah. So now that we have the kick drums and the claps done, there are a couple more layers that I wanna bring in from the claps and see how they sound together with the claps we just EQ'd and the kick drums. So as you can hear, the claps that I just added in are more reverbed. So what I want to do with those is remove a little bit of their body to make them fit better and have them interact better with the rest of the drums that are playing right now. So let's take the first clap that we have in there and we're going to engage the middle band again. And what we're going to do is dial it about 300, 400 hertz. And what I like to do is I like to remove instead of boost to find out if it cleared up. Some people like to boost it, find the frequency, and then counter it and remove it. I like to just remove it and see how it improves the sound or not, and then find that frequency and keep it there. So let's do that. So I moved it to about 400 hertz. Let's remove it quite a bit and see how that sounds, if it made it more clear in the mix. So it's a bit clearer, around, I'd say, 550 hertz. So I gauge the high Q. What that means is that the Q value, instead of being fairly broad, it narrows it much more, which when you do any boost or cutting, especially with cutting frequencies, I'd advise to do high Q because it's more narrow and less drastic for the sound, plus the way our ears work, we are much more sensitive to sounds that are getting cut than boost so so i used the high q on the eq 84 but i removed quite a bit so i want to dial it back a little bit as well and then play this clap back with the rest of the drums that we just processed and see how it sounds and without the eq And with the EQ engaged. As you can hear, it cleared up a little bit of the interaction between all the layered claps. So we can see that there's another clap layered underneath it. And we're gonna do the same exact processing to that one. So again, we engage that middle band, set it to high Q, and move it to about the same frequency and remove it quite drastically. Let's play it back and see how that sounds with the rest of the drums. With this one, you can hear it more defined with the frequency I just removed, how clearer those drums have gotten. Because with the EQ not engaged, we can hear quite a bit of mud, the reverb mud of that clap in the mix. And we want to get, we really want to get rid of that. So, I'm gonna bring it back a little bit because we removed quite a bit and play it back and let you hear how it sounds and then how it sounds without the EQ. And this is what it was without the EQ. And again with the EQ engaged. can hear it's much clearer now without that reverb tail clouding up the mix. So as you can see there's also a snare which I suspect is going to be of the 808 type snare. Let's see if I'm correct. And I'm correct. It's quite a bit loud so let's turn it down first.
And the same here. It sounds like the snare is being used more as a layer for the body of the, cla of the claps and snares. But again, we can hear quite a bit of reverb tail in there. So you want to tame that too. And we're going to do it the same way. So we're going to engage the mid-band. And set it to about the same 500 hertz area with the high Q engaged. Let's remove it quite a bit and press play and see how that improved the sound. So that did improve the sound, but again, we removed quite a bit of frequency. So let's dial it back a little bit and play and see how it meshes with the rest of the drums. So with the EQ engaged and this is without it. And again with the EQ engaged. As you can hear it's much much more defined. Less reverb tail, less mud in the entire drum group over there. So having done the kick drum, the claps and the snare, let's move on to the shakers and the hi-hats in the mix, which I usually tend to process fairly similar as if you would treat a real acoustic drum kit as more like a one defined sound. So let's mute all our claps and kick drums and engage our hi-hats for a minute to see how they sound. As you can hear they're quite decently leveled out already. So let's bring in the rest of our drums again. And let's start with the shaker. Probably I wanna add just a little bit of high-end to it to lift it a little bit out of the, the rest of the drums. So let's look at the EQ84 here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this band over here almost all the way to the left. So let's engage that. And I'll push it all the way to 7.2 kilohertz. And again, boost it quite drastically so we can hear what it is doing to the sound. So let's press play and see what it did. That sounds about right, but again, it's quite a bit of a boost. So dial it back a little bit, press play again. That's with the EQ engaged, and this is without it. And again with the EQ engaged. As you can hear, it lifted the shaker more out of the groups and more into its own defined frequency space. So now we really have the kick on the bottom, the snares and the claps right on top of the kick, and then the shaker now is sitting on top of that. So we have a nice, nice floor to ceiling built frequency space for the drums. We're not quite done yet because we still have a group of hi-hats sitting here. So I'm gonna start with the hi-hat group over here, which is quite a bit. And let's do the same thing. Let's probably put it at about 7.2 kilohertz right over here. Let's engage the band and give it quite of a bit of a boost and see how that interacts with the rest of the drums and if that is the right frequency. That is about right. But again, we gave it quite a bit of a boost like we did with the shakers to really hear if that was the right frequency space that we wanted to boost the, um, the hi-hats at. So we bring that back a little bit so we have it sound more natural. Let's play it back again and see how that sounds. It's about right. So this is how it sounded without the EQ engaged. And with the EQ engaged. As you can hear, it did the same thing as with the shakers. It brought them up from the mix and lifted them in that higher frequency area where we wanted to have it sit. 